In 2012, Erin Odom and her husband hit rock bottom financially. Erin needed to work full time, but she wanted to stay home with her children. And she figured out a way to do just that. Erin Odom's blog post, Staying at Home with Your Kids When You Can Barely Afford It, went viral with more than one million views. Erin started the blog after she and her husband struggled to make ends meet. They filed for bankruptcy and even went on government aid. But eventually they were able to make a financial comeback. In her latest book, You Can Stay Home with Your Kids, Erin shares tips and tricks to help you curb spending and create more income so you can reset your bank account. Please welcome to the 700 Club, Erin Odom. It's great to have you here, Erin. Thank you so much for having me. Let's go back to 2012 for a minute, if we can, and talk a little bit about the financial crisis you all found yourselves in. How bad did it get? Well, we were living on a low income. We discovered at first we didn't even know we were low income until we met with some teachers from our church. And we had a home in a different state that wasn't selling. It sat on the market for oh, four wow. years underwater. We ended up losing that home. We were trying to make it on my husband's teacher salary in North Carolina, which had a <laughs> salary freeze, right? And we were really struggling. We had a low income and we were using government aid and we were spinning our wheels trying to learn how to make it me and we just felt like we couldn't do it. In the middle of all of this, you had a heart desire to be a stay-at-home mom with your kids. Where did that come from, do you think? My mom was always a stay-at-home mom from the time I was two years old, and I always desired to give my children that as well, to stay at home with them. Mm -hmm. And so I prayed about it, and I just really felt that tug. I did work full-time outside the home for my first daughter's first year, but then we decided to try to make it work despite our income. Now, oh, that was kind of jumping off the cliff, wasn't it? <laughs> it was. It was. <laughs> Where did you get the idea that writing a blog could help you with this? Well, at the time, I was doing a lot of different side gigs. I was tutoring some kids. I was teaching other kids homeschool Spanish. I was freelancing for several local newspapers. And I really felt like the Lord just gave people that message to give to me. One of them wasn't even a believer. It was my newspaper editor. The same week, my college roommate, they didn't know each other, but they both said, Aaron, there are moms who are making incomes, full-time incomes, at home with their kids by blogging. You should think about this. And what did God speak to you about your writing? You know, it's really interesting, Terry. When I was in college, I studied journalism, but I also had a deep desire to be a missionary. When yeah. I was 15, I felt God calling me to ministry. And when I was in college, I really felt like the Lord was saying, you're going to reach more people through writing. Wow. I really didn't listen to the Lord for a while. And I said, no, God, I want to be on the mission field. I want to be in Latin America. I want to look at people eye to eye that I'm ministering to. And I kept feeling him say, you're going to reach more people through writing. So fast forward all those years later, I went six years without writing at all. And the Lord said, I've given you this gift. I've given you this passion from the time you were a little girl. And I want you to do this. So I began never imagining that within two years of starting my blog, I would be making more money on it than my husband was teaching. Unbelievable. At the time, I know you wouldn't have seen this, but do you look back now and see that even your financial crisis was a nudge? <laughs> Absolutely. I look back at that financial crisis and it was the catalyst that God used to get me exactly where he wanted me to be. Yeah. This was his calling on my life from the time I was a little girl, but I fought it and I didn't want to do it. And he used that. It was out of desperation that I started that blog, hoping that some way, somehow it would start an income for our family. How long did. did you write the blogs before you thought, wow, <laughs> Something's going on here. <laughs> um, I, I, let's see, I did it for about a year before I was creating much of anything significant. Uh. When you're blogging, it starts out with a penny here, a penny there. And at first, I didn't even really keep a faithful accounting of it. And then within two years, my husband and I said, okay, we really can't, you can't stop this, you know? And I was doing it in the cracks of life. I was stay-at-home mom by day, and my kids would go down for a nap, or they would go to sleep at night, and then I was writing. Wow. And I just kept working on it. And I truly believe that God has gifted us each uniquely and that there are moms out there that have different gifts than I do, but that they could still use those yeah. gifts to create income for their families. Well, the subtitle of your book is 100 Tips, Tricks, and Ways to Make It Work on a Budget. Give me a couple of your favorite. 
So one of my favorite right now is hopping on a health share plan. So there are Christian health share plans. There are four uh, big ones in the United States. And basically it's where believers pool their money together to save money on health care needs. My husband and I have been on one for about a year now. We were paying about $800 a month when he was teaching, which was really hard for us for health insurance. Now we pay $449 a month for our family of six. We have a $1,500 annual unshared amount, which is equal to a, a deductible. Yeah. And so we pay $1,500 out of pocket, and after that, they cover our health care needs. So really, on so many of the tips and the, the ways that you offer in the book, I mean, you've off, you're able to offer them and to explain them because you've walked through them. Absolutely. And I really look back to my childhood. My parents were extremely frugal and they really instilled so many frugal living tips in me that God was preparing me for that time where we would be low income and I would rely on those tips so much to make it through each day. And now he has given me that wisdom to share with other moms who desire to be at home with their kids. And you know, not everybody's going to be a wonderful writer. That's the gift that God has given you. But you share some creative ideas on how moms and dads can creatively produce additional income for themselves. Give me one of those. So being a virtual assistant, if you are very organized, if you have administrative skills, you can be a virtual assistant, ea.com. You can look for an online secretarial type job, whether you're a mom or a dad. Something else is VIP kid. If you have any teaching experience, even homeschooling your own children, and you have a college degree, you can earn up to $25 an hour by teaching children in China English via the internet. My niece was just hired. <laughs> was she? <laughs> yes. I think it's a genius idea. I mean, everybody's need is met. I love it. I have friends that are single moms that make an income through VIP kid and tutoring. So they're able to stay at home with their kids. They're able to use their gifts. So amazing. You and your husband have four children. You're thriving now, I'm assuming. <laughs> we do. We have four children. And every day I look at other people with four and I say, that's a lot of kids. And then I realize we have four yeah. kids too. Oh, yeah. We are very blessed. <laughs> that's wonderful. Well, Erin's book is called You Can Stay Home With Your Kids, 100 Tips, Tricks, and Ways to Make It Work on a Budget. It's available wherever books are sold. Plus, Erin shares more of her amazing tips in our social exclusive interview with her on Facebook. If you'd like to check that out, I encourage you to do it. Just go to facebook.com slash 700 club.